Yes, hi everyone. Um, my name is uh, Jose Luis Millan. I'm coming here today to talk to you about uh, ESIP, the SIP stack uh, library. Well, I'm currently based in Berlin. I'm uh, working for a company called Frafos, uh, where we build a SIP and media server, which is actually an SVC, and it also has uh, WebRTC capabilities. Uh, JSIP is a SIP stack. It's also a Node.js library, even though you can also find uh, Debian packages and uh, Bower packages as well. I have seen uh, before the, the Debian uh, package man maintainer here, David Pocock. Uh, and uh, one uh, huge feature for me is that it's uh, fully, fully documented. You can find the documentation in the website. Can you speak a little bit louder? Yes, sure, okay. So what's the motivation behind the uh, JSC? There was a trigger in time. Uh, which was the WebSocket transport. When WebSocket transport came to, to play to the playground, we saw a huge opportunity to make browsers SIP devices uh, in such a way that uh, uh, the, the, this, the, these devices uh, should be as not not only uh, soft phones like uh, not hardware would be needed, but uh, uh, so simple to use uh, and to upgrade as uh, reloading a website. So by making a JavaScript library, not only you can have a zip stack and make a use zip in your, in your browser, but you can upgrade to the new version but by just upgrading your, the website. You download again the JavaScript file and you've got the new version of, of JSZip. So it was also a nice excuse to learn SIP and JavaScript mo more deeply, and I really think we were in the right moment at the right at the right place when uh, WebSocket was uh, starting uh, becoming a standard. Looking back, we started in uh, 2011. That's where the development started, and then in that that year we could uh, already be able to make a zip call uh, from, from browser to browser or from browser to a, to a legacy UDP or TCP uh, zip device. Of course, not with media because uh, WebRTC was not uh, yet uh, already. So we started uh, also writing a draft to make a WebSocket a standard transport for zip. In that same year, WebSocket became a standard and so everything was clear. I mean, uh, once uh, we were able to have WebSocket as a standard transport for SIP, then it was it was the the, the image was uh, was perfectly we could perfectly see see that it was it would be easier once the, being the standard the WebSocket protocol, then uh, current uh, voice over IP servers could adapt and create a new transport in order to be able to communicate these two words, the web and the zip word. Then 2011, uh, the first uh, zip call with media, thanks to WebRTC. And uh, in uh, 2014, the zip over WebSocket became a standard. So there was no excuse anymore for uh, zip server vendors to implement the, the transport. There's a list of implemented uh, RFCs. There are many, many more in the in the SIP uh, ground, but uh, I think these are no more nor less just those that we needed at that time and indeed uh, right now. The API. Well, uh, there were uh, several points that were quite clear. We wanted to provide an API easy to use that could abstract the user from SIP internals. We didn't we were uh, really uh, aware about the fact that uh, users making uh, SIP applications with JSIP uh, didn't need to be SIP experts. So we wanted to abstract them from the SIP protocol internals. That's why. That it was a must that the API should be as simple as, as possible. So it's quite expressive. As you can see, we can create a SIP user agent by passing a basic configuration, 
which, uh, which only uh, mandatory options are the CURI and, uh, and a socket, a, a server socket to connect to. <laughs> then we can start the, the user agent, register and register. How can we call? Okay, just call, call. How can we send a message? Just call, send a message. Okay. Also, it is a call-driven uh, API, meaning that the communication between the JSCP objects and the, and the user are the callbacks. So you define your callback functions uh, in order to set your logic when a new RTC session comes, then you set a new RTC session callback function. You can then in the, in the callback object in, inspect who is usually the direction is just is quite a, a common attribute of the JSC uh, uh, and callback objects, which, which tells you who is doing this action. Is this this local this new RTC session being locally generated? Is it an output call? Is it remotely generated? Is it is it an input call? Then answer, check it, draw, react to whatever you need. So, at a glance. Uh, this is the the GSC architecture. Uh, I think, yeah, it uh, quite well represents the the core. We've got uh, everything. All of these points are stand over the user agent, who holds the transport that holds many sockets. Also, dialogues, uh, who on top of which uh, RTC sessions are created. You can also do IM message message. Uh, we have a registrator attached to the user agent, so the user agent can register and register. And uh, this is basically is. <coughs> so as you can see, it looks like a modular design. It was also a must uh, since the beginning. Uh, we wanted its element uh, to take care of its things and abstract the others from its internals. As an example, we've got the transport. As we can see in the previous slide, we see a transport and multiple sockets. Okay, then why don't we see web sockets? Because actually, you don't need to use web socket to use JSIP. We provide a socket interface, which, which is really simple, uh, which needs to implement three methods, connect, disconnect, and send, which will be called by JSIP when necessary. Also, three callbacks on connect, on disconnect, on data. So, JSIP is aware of whether it is able to send data to this transport or not. And it's, it's got some mandatory attributes, well, which go, got their default op, uh, values, which are via transport, URL, zip, URI, who helps uh, for some, uh, to help uh, creating the zip messages and uh, setting uh, certain non-standard values that uh, some uh, zip server vendors require. Uh, this way you can, I mean, you are not attached to, to use WebSocket, of course. We provide a WebSocket built-in implementation. Uh, we also have a WebSocket node uh, module, so you can use uh, JSIP in node. Of course, we are talking about signaling, not media. And, uh, yeah, that's all. So you could send your SIP messages over HTTP or over some application over HTTP or over any other kind of transport that respects this and implements the interface. Another example of the, this is the communication, internal communication of the object. We can see here uh, this Onion architecture where we abstract uh, objects from others implementation. So a requester could be uh, I, am, I am a message sender or a dialogue or a registrar who wants to send, in this case, a zip message. So it delegates to the request sender who creates a zip transaction and delegates the, the sending of the, of the packet to the transport who uses the socket and everyone does its thing. So there, for example, the request sender, in case there is a need to make a digest authentication, we don't deliver it to the original requester, but we uh, absorb and uh, consume it on the request sender. 
making this, uh, this more modular and even cleaner. Another important part is the RTC session. Why is this important? When we are talking about media, uh, we need to look at this class. This is the one that deals with the WebRTC API, the one that uh, adds and removes uh, streams to the WebRTC engine, the one that requests the SDP, so we can later send the SDP through a SIP message, and as well, uh, once receiving an SDP, it uh, fits the, the WebRTC engine with this information, so we can magically, thanks to WebRTC, establish a media connection. Apart from those uh, uh, actions, this is a, these are the typical SIP uh, actions that we could expect from a session that are hold and hold, mute and mute transfers, DTMS SIP info. We can we, uh, also offer uh, some callbacks uh, so you can modify your SDP uh, before when you receive it from the network, before you fill it to the WebRTC core or after you are um, sending the SDP to your, to your SIP server so you can adapt it to some circumstances or for example at data channel information or whatever you need. In order to communicate with the WebRTC engine, we use WebRTC adapter uh, which solves the incompatibility between uh, naming uh, mostly of uh, APIs offered by different uh, browser vendors. This way we just abstract, we just use uh, the standard uh, naming and we don't care which browser we are talking to, this library solves this issue for us. Okay. Let's go for a demo. Okay, this, is, this demo is a double demo. Uh, the aim of the first uh, part is uh, showing the, uh, that we can, we can build a node application uh, in order to use uh, JSIP for signaling and the other one will make uh, a media demonstration. <coughs> okay. <laughs> oh, Saul, can you please? No, I'm not going to see it. Here, 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 no, here, 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 ¿No tienes el monitor? No. Blue screen. Blue screen of death. ¿Has, has tirado él? Igual de picado. Show mirroring options. Where are the mirroring options? Hello. Vale, vale, vale. ¿Cómo la muevo? ¿Cómo que la mueva? Mueve la pantalla externa. ¿Cómo? Que la mueva. Tira de ella y mueve la pantalla. Ah, ok, ok, vale, vale. vale. <ríe> ok. Ups. Ah, I cannot split. Ah, uh, so. I cannot split. Uh, I need it to split. Well, ok. I will. Okay. Oh. Okay. So hmm, I will go for the second part. The. Chau, chau, cable. Dime. El browser, tío, no sé cómo. No, 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 Command go for. Okay. Yeah, but didn't show there. I don't know where the fuck they are. Ah, they're mirror display. There you go. <laughs> okay, sorry for the inconveniences. Uh, okay, I will need to do it in a single. 
Okay, I wanted to have uh, split this split it so we could see the the execution of the app in one side and the code in the other side. But I will. Uh, it would have made things a lot easier. So please, uh, if you are interested, pay attention because uh, they will not happen uh, at the same time. So you can see the, my cursor. Uh, we are requiring JSIP as well as the Node uh, JSIP uh, WebSocket because we are creating a JSIP user agent using the Node WebSocket transport. So mainly, this is the. In order to show how easy can we use it, this is the. The main function, uh, which just creates a WebSocket uh, node, WebSocket uh, creates a user agent with this web, uh, WebSocket and starts the user agent. There are uh, two callbacks uh, predefined with just the back some information. Uh, the application allows us to be inside this. Um, uh, this uh, script, so we will be able to control the user agent by executing commands. Okay, first of all, okay. Okay, so I have enabled the zip login because I thought this was interesting for the first time. Okay, we can see here that the JSIP is starting, we can see the configuration and it's auto-registering because by default it's auto-registered. We are registering in a testing service that we have in tragicjsip.net. Okay, now I will go out, I will disable JSIP. I just wanted to show you the zip traffic here. Okay, now we are in the application. I made a very simple uh, CLI where you can uh, kind of control uh, this uh, user agent instance we have uh, already seen and uh, well we can see the status uh, we are using this, this version we are connected registered and uh, I will establish a remote uh, peer uh, okay peer uh, I will connect to my, my colleague uh, Iñaki I will try to establish a chat here Hi there. Hi. Okay, so, yep. Okay, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, let's call. Yep. Hi there. Hi, how are you doing? <laughs> okay, Nyaki is just there. Thanks. Yep. Okay, so let me just tell you what just happened here. <coughs> we, just, we, did, we did a kind of trick here. Um, so we were, uh, the chat is based on a zip message request from one to another. And there was a, a cookie uh, phrase, uh, which is uh, invite plus something, uh, where we send uh, Iñaki a, a link, a URL, a URL to, a, to the Java, uh, Tragit uh, JSIP demo, demo web application, which actually runs on top of the browser. Uh, so sending this invitation through a zip message, and uh, he received this message and uh, opened his browser with the, with, the, with the given link. At the same time, I opened as well the browser, so we could make the, the media communication. Mm -hmm. And That is it. Uh, I'm sorry for the inconveniences on the demo. I hope uh, everyone understood uh, my aim, and I'm uh, I'm willing to answer any question you may have. Okay.
No questions? Yes? Do you have um, suggestions for um, backends, especially concerning audio codecs between different browsers and different <laughs> clients? And um, so they are transcoded on the backend, or what's the normal way to do that? Well, since there in WebRTC there are mandatory codecs, if you are talking with uh, WebRTC endpoints, you don't need to bother about transcoding because they should share at least a common codec. Okay. Otherwise, uh, if you are trying to communicate with the legacy voice over AP network, then you should take care of that and, and transcode accordingly. Yes, so it was it. Thanks, Jose. Thanks for listening. Gracias.